Cool. Hey guys, welcome along to episode three of Yak Yarns. My name is Chelsea. I'm the deputy chairperson for the CDHB Youth Advisory Council. Um, just a quick little couple of things. If you haven't um, been along to any of our previous Yak Yarns, Yak Yarns is a conversation series we're having with health professionals across the sector to talk about um, health and well-being for young people from all different things related. Um, we will be on the live stream, so if you've got any questions, feel free to chuck them up. Um, but I'm going to introduce Taylor from Endo New Zealand. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Lovely to be here. So great. Um, I thought we'd just start off by you introducing yourself, what you do, um, and basically who you are. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, um, yeah, I'm Taylor. I work for Endometriosis New Zealand. So we're a very small charity, um, just teaching people, raising awareness about endometriosis. And I am their health educator. So um, my main role is going into secondary schools and teaching and raising awareness, helping people um, that learning what a normal period is and what's potentially endometriosis and teaching them how they can get help. Yeah. Um, and then we also work with doctors, um, researchers on sort of the other side, um, learning more about endometriosis yeah. and just supporting people who are going through, you know, suffering with endometriosis or their whanau, um, cause it does affect more than just the individual, it, you know, affects yeah. everyone that they're around as well. So, um, you know, however that may be, whether it's in the workplace, you know, talking on the phone, um, we have it all. Awesome. You do a lot for just a little yeah. charity, you know, you yeah, do a yeah. lot. Um, cool. So I thought we'd kind of kick off. We had lots of questions come through from young people. Um, so one of the main questions that were asked was, what is normal menstrual health? You know, we kind of, we talk about menstrual health, but we, what is normal menstrual health? Yeah. Um, um, so with normal, um, everyone is really different. So a really helpful way to figure out what your normal would be is tracking your period. So yep. you can do that on, you know, you can get period tracking apps on your phone. It might just be using the calendar on your phone or even just a um, physical diary or however it works for you and yep. keeping a track of everything that you're experiencing throughout the month. So not just when you've got your typical period, but symptoms happening across the month and yep. Over time, as you're tracking things, what you'll start to notice, hopefully, is there is some sort of rhythm. So you know, okay, I'm going to get my period. It generally lasts, you know, however many days. It's usually this heavy. This is my normal. Yeah. If you're noticing that you're getting pain outside of your period or you're getting pain symptoms that are popping up throughout your period, that's when you know something might be going on. Um, but everyone is different. So the way you know, if you are tracking, that's how you can figure out what your period is because everyone, yeah. you know, what you've got will be different to me and <laughs> person. Yeah. Um, so that way you can then also, if you do have concerns, take it along to the doctor and they can physically see what's happening, when it's happening, you know, how bad is it? Um, and then they'll be able to work with you to figure out best next steps. Awesome. Yeah, because I think it'd be quite hard to, you know, periods you we have them like every month and you know it can be even more than every month and you when you go to see a gp or something you can almost kind of forget what's been going on so having like yeah. a tracked record of what you've like what's been happening symptom wise is so helpful um so i guess we've kind of talked about normal menstrual health but i guess when do you know if it's abnormal when do you know if something's not quite right do you yeah. know is it just a <laughs> um i mean with sort of normal or abnormal, what we tend to say is discomfort. So a little bit of pain, a little bit of cramping, that can often be normal with a period. It's yeah. the distressing pain that's never normal. So if you notice it's getting in the way of you being able to go to school or go to work, um, if you're unable to do stuff with friends or Fano, or if you know it's just, you know, every day-to-day -day thing that when your period comes or when you've got that pain and um, symptoms happening, if you are having to stop doing yeah. life, um, that's when it's not normal. So yeah, anything that's happening that is stopping getting in the way of things, that's when we say, hey, look, we, we suggest you go and talk to someone. Doesn't necessarily mean that 
it's endometriosis. I don't want anyone like freaking out <laughs> crying. Oh my gosh, I have endometriosis. It's yeah. just that we suggest you go and talk to someone else, have a bit of a chat, and they'll be able to work with you to come up with a bit of a plan forward. Awesome. So like another question that kind of came through was, you know, someone was talking about how maybe earlier in life, so when they first started getting their periods, they kind of considered them as normal, but they've become a young adult and their periods have kind of changed or maybe they've got more pain or different things. Can they change or is you, are you quite consistent if you've kind of started having like normal periods? Are they normally consistent right through? Yeah, so everyone can change, obviously, as we're getting older, our hormones and things are changing. Um, so it is quite possible for your periods to change. The other thing that may happen is if you do go on the pill, the pill can then um, regulate your hormones and help regulate your period or potentially even stop your period. So if you mm -hmm. do start the pill and then you come off it later in life, that's when you may start experiencing symptoms or pain that you've never had before it may have been that the pill um, the contraceptive um, pill was covering some of the symptoms so there's different things that may be going on but at any point we always say you know if, if you start to notice things appearing popping up going oh my goodness this is just not right we yeah. always you know definitely recommend going to talk to doctor, nurse, um, gynecologist, if um, mm. you've tried talking to people and it kind of hasn't worked. Um, with endometriosis, we don't know the exact cause of what it's from. Mm. So there's a few different theories out there. We've got researchers and scientists working away um, to figure out the exact cause. They're coming up with a few different things, one of which is family genes. So it seems to run in families. So that means, you know, if mum or grandma or someone has endo, you're more likely to have it. But that's not the only thing. Some people might go, okay, none of my family members have any issues. They're all happy. <laughs> you know, we don't know where this has come from. So yeah. because we don't know exactly is what's causing it, we don't know if it was always there and something's triggered the endo yeah. or if, um, you know, your hormones have changed and caused it. So yeah. it's kind of hard to say, you know, <laughs> it, if it's there from the start or if it's changed, um, something's happened to cause the pain or symptoms later on in life. Yeah. But it is yeah. possible for your period, just as you um, age, for things to change, as your body gets used to things, your hormones change things may change. That's where um, tracking periods can be super useful as well because you yeah. can potentially notice that change as you go along. Yeah, awesome. So you just kind of started talking about endometriosis there in terms of, you know, that we don't actually quite know yet where, how it yeah. exists. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about endo, kind of the stats, what it is? Um, yeah, just for people that might not have never heard of endometriosis in general. Yeah, absolutely. So endometriosis, or we can call it endo, it's far easier to say. Yeah. Um, it's when tissue similar to the lining of the uterus, so the endometrium, when tissue similar to that, is found growing outside the uterus in a place where it shouldn't be. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't know the exact cause of why it's outside the uterus, but we yeah. know that it's not meant to be there. And it can look quite red and inflamed. Um, it is an inflammatory disease. Yeah. And endo can cause some, you know, pretty horrible symptoms. Endo can sort of come up differently for everyone. So um, it can be cramps, um, you know, severe cramping or pain in the abdomen area. Um, some people get pain in their lower back. It might be tops of their legs. Um, some people find that they get bowel-related symptoms, so it might be bloating, um, constipation, diarrhea. Some people get pain with urination, pain with intercourse or pain with sex. Um, there's a range of different symptoms. Um, you can, we have a full list, just if anyone is interested, on our website. So just Google Endometriosis New Zealand and it will pop yeah. up and you can go through all the symptoms on there. But it's different for everyone. So what, you know, the symptoms are, you don't have to be ticking every symptom on that list. Yeah. Which makes it, you know, a little bit more complicated. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it might just be one or two of those symptoms there that is really causing some grief. We still suggest, you know, hey, if you, you notice those cramps are really, really bad getting in the way of doing stuff or the pain with um, sex is, you know, really causing issues, 
still go and chat to someone. Um, don't go, oh, you know, I'm just being dramatic or, you know, any of that sort of stuff. So, yeah, but annoying that endo can be different for everyone, yeah. but it's super common. While loads of people have never heard of it, <laughs> it's actually really, really common. So what we know is it affects about one in 10. So that's 176 million right around the world. Mm -hmm. And in New Zealand, that's around about 130,000 Kiwis. So super common. That common, <laughs> you will know someone in your life who has it if you don't already. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, it's just not really talked about. People still find it, um, I guess, talking about periods and all of that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Um, just something that they're not overly comfortable about, which um, sort of, I guess, a little bit silly because it is a completely <laughs> natural body function. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you know, doing things like this and we can get people chatting about it, get people comfortable um, talking about something that is so common. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, of course, we've kind of talked about how we should maybe see a GP if mm -hmm. you're concerned about anything. How is endometriosis diagnosed? I know that's more of a medical kind of question, but how is it commonly kind of diagnosed? Yeah, so the only way to officially diagnose endometriosis is with this thing called laparoscopic surgery or keyhole surgery. So the surgery is carried out by a gynecologist or a specialist in women's health. And we ideally want a gynecologist who specializes in endometriosis yeah. um, just because they've done extra study. They know the, I guess, the gold standard um, of treating endometriosis yeah. with the keyhole surgery. Um, it's surgery. So the person is put to sleep with general anesthetic and how we want the endometriosis removed is with this really clever technique called excision or resection. Pretty much what that means is the skin where the endo is growing is cut out and new skin will grow in its place. And that's like a really, really basic overview. <laughs> if you were talking to a gynecologist, they'd be able to give you, you know, a lot more detail. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not. <laughs> but um, yeah, so the only way to sort of officially diagnose it is with the laparoscopic surgery. A lot of people, when they go to the doctor, will get tests and scans done. So, you know, for example, blood tests, they might get any uh, MRI or an ultrasound maybe just to make sure nothing else is going on which is fabulous we want to you know be sure that nothing else is going on um, that everything else is sitting where it should be that it's happy it's healthy um, if those tests do come back clear it's not ruling out endometriosis so if for some reason you do get um, you know those test come back and your doctor says hey look you know they're clear we're good we'll you know you either have to deal with the pain or let's come up with something else to manage it definitely um, push for a referral through to a gynecologist because then they will be able to take it that step further and do the um, laparoscopic surgery not everyone has to have the surgery however I don't want anyone freaking out going oh my goodness surgery that's a really big deal yeah um, <laughs> You can still have, you know, from the symptoms and everything that you're going through, the gynecologist might say, look, we think you have endometriosis. We're, we're pretty sure that's what it is. We can manage it without that official diagnosis. Um, but a lot of people find that having that diagnosis um, can help both the mental aspect and, you know, being able to put a name to everything that you're going through can be really helpful. A lot of people also find that surgery can help manage some of the pain and the symptoms that they're experiencing as well um but i don't want anyone freaking out going, oh my goodness because yeah. you know, it, it, it is it is a big deal so um there are lots of ways to help manage things without having to go straight for the surgery awesome um so we just kind of yeah talked about like seeing a doctor or getting a like gynecologist referral mm -hmm. what do you do if they aren't taking you seriously like you know you're trying to push for a gynae referral and maybe you know as you say results could come back clear and so they think it's fine what do you do if they're not like taking you seriously yeah unfortunately we still have a lot of people that come to us and they're saying look you know I, i'm feeling like i'm crazy that all of this is in my head people aren't taking me seriously. If you're talking to a doctor or even a gynecologist, if you're talking to someone and they don't believe you or they're not taking you seriously, 
please go go and get a second or maybe even a third opinion go and talk to someone else because trust me it's not in your head you know your body better than anyone else will know your body so don't let anyone tell you that hey you know you it is in your head we just have to deal with that pain you kind of have to suck it up yeah if you're going through everything and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, if you're talking to doctors, what I would suggest is just asking for a referral through to a gynecologist to chat to someone else that is more specialized in women's health. Yeah. We have also recently, um, beginning of March, um, released a document called um, the Diagnosis and Management of Endometriosis in New Zealand. So that was driven by ENDS and it was alongside Ministry of Health. Um, so it is a Ministry of Health document, but it was driven by ENDS alongside the medical colleges and all of that. And this is sort of the ideal pathway of how we want endometriosis managed in New Zealand. So if so, you feel like you're talking to someone and it's not going anywhere, you can print out this document and go, this is what, <laughs> I think I have this is you know I, I need to get some more information and take that document along with you so that document if you do need to find it um, is also on the website um, endometriosis New Zealand um, under news blog so um, you can go on there it is also on the Ministry of Health website if you googled endometriosis I think it would um, hopefully pop up but it's on our website that you can Go and have a read through. Um, you can print it off, take it to whoever. Um, and that's just another document from the Ministry of Health to back you up saying, look, this is how I should be treated. You may even educate people along the way. Um, but yeah, and, and as horrible as it is that you're having to, you know, fight or, you know, feel like you're not being believed by doctors, there is you know, someone else out there that will take you seriously and that will work with you to get that diagnosis or, you know, if it's not endometriosis, figure out what it may be and, yeah. you know, help you deal with everything that's going on, really. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I guess I had another kind of question which was more yeah. specifically related to gynecologists and they're talking about how long do we expect to wait to see a gynecologist if we get a referral put through? How long is it till we actually get to see them? Because, you know, GPs, we might be able to see them within a week or two weeks depending yeah. on how busy they are. But is it the same for gynecologists? Is it a lot longer? Um, yeah. That's a big question. <laughs> so in New Zealand, there's a couple of different ways that you can go and see a gynecologist. So you can either go through the public system in New Zealand, which is all completely free, or you can have um, health insurance to go and see a gynecologist privately. So if you are going privately, you will be covered by your insurance. We double check that you're covered by your insurance and you can make an appointment with whoever you want to see. And it would just be teeing up with the gynecologist when they're free and when suits you to have that appointment. So it's a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, and then that way you can be a little bit pickier on who you want to visit. So you can make sure you're seeing a gynecologist who specializes in endometriosis. If you're going through the public system in New Zealand, not a problem. It will take a little bit longer, however. Um, so with the doctor, they'll send off a referral form through to your DHB, to your hospital. With the referral form, you want to make sure it's super detailed, making sure it explains, you know, what symptoms you've got going on, if it's getting in the way of school, um, you know, university, work, um, it might be mental health even, um, yeah. relationships, anything like that that's going on, make sure that's listed in the um, referral form because the more information they have, the better that the hospital will be able to tell everything that's going on and slot you into that wait list. Yeah. Unfortunately, however, all across New Zealand, <laughs> it is different on the wait list, so I can't give real times. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you were to chat to the... Um, doctor that you're um, getting the referral from they'll be able to give you a bit better of an idea on your specific um, hospital and what the potential wait list um, times are to yeah. get an appointment to see someone 
Cool. So I'm uh, just kind of picking back off. You're talking about the private system there in terms of, you know, it's more you get to pick. Um, how do you know about going to pick a gynecologist? Is that something you talk with your GP through and they have no private ones or can you just kind of go yourself um, and get it? But then how do you know who to go see apart from you said specialised in endo? But yeah. How do you, you know, how do you know um, about it? Yeah. I mean, it may be that you talk to your doctor. If it's someone that you trust, you know, you see your family doctor and you get along well with them and you trust their opinion, you could yeah. go through that. Um, we also, again, on the website, have a group called ESIG. So um, our ESIG group is Endometriosis Special Interest Group is what it stands for. And yeah. they are just a heap of um, experts from around New Zealand and there's a few from around the world who specialize in the treatment and management of endo. We do have a few gynecologists on there scattered about New Zealand. Um, so if you know you were trying to find a starting point to find someone, you could go on there. We've got their profiles. You can read a wee bit more about them and where they are awesome. in New Zealand. Awesome. If you get, you know, hear a name or a friend, family member goes, oh, they're really good. You should go and see them. You can just Google their name real simple and okay. it will pop up with their um, private clinic. And then you can have a read through, you know, check that they do specialize in endo. And if you're not sure about who they are, what they do, you can always just ring their clinic. Their receptionist or their nurse will be able to chat to you little bit more background give you potential costs if you need um, to know any of that sort of stuff so yeah. there's lots of ways um, and you know if you're getting super confused or overwhelmed you can always just get in touch with us um, that's kind of what we're here for <laughs> <laughs> you know so we're always here to help and advise um, to give you some ideas forward as well Awesome. Um, I guess because we were kind of talking earlier about menstrual health and stuff, it is kind of still a bit of a taboo subject. It can be really hard for young people to go off and talk about it. Do you have any suggestions about how do you kind of approach this conversation with your GP or um, maybe even if you do get told that you do have endo or that you have something else going on, how do you talk about it with your friends and kind of share what's going on? Because it, yeah, it is a taboo subject and it can be some people can feel really awkward kind of talking yeah, about it. Absolutely. Um, talking with your doctor, definitely, if you're not comfortable talking to them, I would suggest going to find someone that you are comfortable with because you, the more information the doctor has, the better they're going to be able to help treat you. So finding a doctor that you feel super comfortable being able to just go, this is everything I'm going through, please help me, is... Yeah super key in just being able to um, manage whatever you potentially are going through. So um, yeah, it might be going to a couple of different people, getting a few um, opinions or trying a few different doctors until you find that one you really click with. Yeah. Um, in terms of talking to friends, family members, other people about endo um, or periods in general, what I would suggest is starting with people you really trust, someone that's really close to you and going, hey, look, this is what I'm going through. This is, you know, the pain or the symptoms. Um, and it may be bringing up, you know, the ENDS website or, you know, having some medical information there that can kind of back you up rather than it just being, you know, people think periods, blood, oh my goodness, <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> you can kind of take away from that um, and look at it more of like that medical side of things um might just help remove some of the um i guess the awkwardness around periods um endometriosis isn't just you know bad periods it's so much more than that it can do you know all of these pains these symptoms it can affect in the um, pelvic region or you know be found so much more than just a bad period so if you take away from you don't even have to mention periods if you don't want you could just go hey look these are the symptoms i've got going on this is what's been found i've, I've had this surgery or i might have to have this surgery and look at it from that angle um, might help but definitely talking to people you trust first up yeah and then you know having them there um maybe that support you need to talk to other people if you don't feel comfortable letting other people know you don't have to um completely whatever you're comfortable with really um yeah uh, 
it's always going to be an awkward topic you know to start with but the more yeah. people talking about it the more we are openly going hey look this is what i've got going on yeah the more people will be like oh you know it's, it's not actually that bad to talk about or you may without even realizing go this is what i'm going through and someone else will go oh my goodness that's what i'm going through or oh i know so and so mm -hmm. who has this and you know start up a really good conversation like i said earlier is super common so chances are if you don't have it yourself you're going to know someone who has it and so you're going to be able to have those conversations with people you may not have ever thought were struggling themselves yeah awesome good tips there because it, yeah it is like there's so many people i've had so many conversations with young people and it's one of the things that they really struggle with especially if they do have issues or whatever, they don't know how to talk about it so that's awesome um i guess the other question we had come through was workplaces um and endo do they need to share that they have endo you know because i think some of the concerns that were coming through were questions about if I need to take time off work and I'm struggling to tell them about what's actually going on, how do you kind of approach it? How do you, do you need to tell workplaces? And if you do, how do you tell them? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, it would depend on each person and their workplace. Um, some yeah. workplaces, especially if you're taking an extended time off, require a doctor's note to say, yeah, I'm actually sick. I'm not just taking a holiday <laughs> or something. Yeah. Um, so it would be entirely up to you if you were to tell them more, if you had to tell them. Um, it may be finding someone within the workplace that you trust, um, that you do feel that connection with, that you're comfortable going, hey, look, this is what I'm going through. Can you help me maybe talk to a manager? Can you help me? Um, or if you know you feel super comfortable or you want to educate them about what you're going through, um, you can again, you know, maybe even using the ENS website, just again, that medical stuff to back you up so people learn about endometriosis. We yeah. also offer a um, workplace wellness. Um, so it's called WISE and we come into workplaces and go, this is what endometriosis is. This is how you can support people in your workplace who have endo, um, you know, and help raise awareness. So it would be, you know, up to each person. Um, and again, it's just finding those people you trust. If you're not comfortable at, you know, the start, you don't have to tell them. Um, if it is getting in the way of work and, you know, being able to do your job, um, it may get to the point where you need to start having that conversation. But quite often they will then work with you to come up with, you know, ways around managing um, pain or symptoms that you've got going on. It might be that you, um, you know, if you've got bad cramps, you might sit with a hot water bottle at your desk or, um, yeah. you know, if you need to sit and stand. So, you know, or being able to take a break and go for a walk or however it works for you to be able to manage some of the pain and the symptoms. Um, most people will hopefully be super supportive and you know, quite likely have someone in their family or one of their good friends that has endo as well. So, um, you know, you might again start that conversation and be surprised where it goes. Yeah, awesome. And I guess the kind of one of the final questions we had was around, you know, when you think of like endo, you think of periods, it's obviously quite medical based. Is there more to it in terms of coping mechanisms or ways to kind of deal with your periods? Is it just medicine or is there other different routes or pathways to help essentially? Or is it just med medicine and like, you know, medications and things to manage it? Yeah. So um, with endometriosis, there's a few ways to help manage it because we can't sort of officially cure it yet there's lots of things that we can do to manage the pain and the symptoms. So we've obviously got the laparoscopic surgery um, or the keyhole surgery. So that's one we aspect. I briefly mentioned um, the contraceptive pill. So that can also help manage some of the pain and the symptoms someone might be going through. So that would be working with either your gynecologist or your doctor to figure out what might work for you, what might um, be helpful. Yep, um, yep. Some people do find other pain medications can be useful on, you know, those really bad days. We don't obviously want to be relying on stuff like that um, long yep. term. So then that's where it comes into more of the holistic side of um, managing endo. So we've got stuff like nutrition. 
So in particular, people with bowel-related symptoms um, can find diet um, or particular foods can trigger symptoms or make them worse. So being aware of what you're eating, taking note, and it might be, again, you know, alongside tracking your pain and your symptoms, tracking what food you're eating, and hopefully you'll notice a you know, food that's causing some of the pain or the symptoms, yeah. making them a little bit worse. And then you can go, okay, this is what might be causing it. And then um, cutting it out of your diet to see if that um, manages it. Of course, we're not allergic to the food. Um, so it just means your body doesn't like it as much. You might be a little bit intolerant to it. So mm -hmm. you don't have to cut it out completely. It doesn't mean you can never eat it again in your life. Or, you know, um, it might be your favorite food and you go, oh my goodness. It might be that, you know, you just eat less of it. Um, so people find that managing um, nutrition can be quite useful. We've also got exercise. Um, exercise is a great natural pain relief. Um, when I say exercise in terms of endometriosis, I don't mean it has to be a massive workout or a huge run or anything ridiculous <laughs> like that. Some days when the pain or the symptoms might be a little bit worse, it might be as simple as getting up and going for a walk around the block, walk around the park, might even be to the end of the um, driveway and back. Really basic little things that get you up and moving, keep your body um, and your muscles moving. And it will also help your body pump some of the good hormones around. And then we've got, you know, stuff people find, um, physiotherapy, massage, acupuncture. Um, there's a loads of different little things that people can be doing, which will hopefully come together and find a really good plan that will work for each individual. Unfortunately, like I said earlier, endo <laughs> is different for everyone. So it will be a bit of trial and error, finding out what your specific plan is, what your body needs and wants to manage everything. But, you know, coming up with that long-term plan with things that are natural um, will be helping you rather than having to turn to pain medications or, you know, stuff that aren't ideal long-term. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of things. It can be super overwhelming when you hear about all of the stuff that potentially you've got to go through or you know, you've got to learn all of this stuff. Um, but just slowly, you know, one day at a time, managing things, figuring it out, slowly learning about it. Um, you know, our website, I keep referring back to it, but um, <laughs> our website has loads of information and pretty easy to understand um, you know words to yeah. slowly learn about it what endo is and it's also we made sure that is referenced and you know it's correct information okay. be super careful when just googling stuff <laughs> um, even though where you're going to land on the internet um unfortunately you know we mentioned earlier you know periods and endo they're not widely spoken about they're not hugely um known so there's yeah. lots of myths out there so just be super careful when you are trying to come up with you know some of that management plan that you're not just googling and finding all of these myths and going oh my goodness <laughs> is this what i've got to do yeah. um you know so finding websites that are referenced to learn more about that self-management but like I said, you know, it is super overwhelming to get your head around this disease. Um, so we have Endo Help, which is just a free half an hour on the phone where you can just chat to me. Um, I do it on a Monday afternoon and a Thursday lunchtime. We just book free half an hour. We can chat on the phone and come up with a bit more specialized to kind of what you're going through. Um, it's I'm not a doctor or nurse or anything like that, unfortunately. <laughs> but, you know, I'm happy to chat with you and help you come up with a bit of a plan um, to kind of manage things, you know, maybe just support and, you know, you might just want to chat to someone who kind of gets it. That's always there that if you are, you know, oh my goodness, what is all of this? <laughs> um, or maybe this is the first time you're hearing about it and you're going, this kind of sounds like me. I'm always here to kind of chat and, you know, help you forward. Awesome. It's such a great resource because it can be absolutely daunting when you first start. So having someone A that kind of knows what's going on, but can also yeah. be your advocate as well if you're struggling, then that's that's really awesome. Um we're gonna kind of finish with the last question that we kind of ask every speaker on our series. Um, what's one thing you'd like young people to take away from this conversation tonight? Um, one thing. 
<laughs> um, I think probably that discomfort that can be often normal with a period, but it's the distressing pain that's never normal. So, you know, if you're taking days off school or education, work, um, unable to do stuff with your friends because of the pain or the symptoms you're going through, it's not normal. Um, you don't have to be putting up with that for the rest of your life. Um, and, you know, you're not crazy. It's not all in your head. So, you know, go and talk to someone if you're not getting that um, help from the first person you talk to. Get a second or a third opinion because, you know, you know your body better than anyone. So there will be um, someone out there that will support you through. Hopefully one day we won't get, we'll get to the point where, you know, you don't have to get multiple um, opinions <laughs> takes you seriously. But yeah, yeah. Um, the discomfort can often be normal with a period, but it's that distressing pain that's never normal. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been so great to have you. Um, yeah, really thank you so appreciate much. It. Yeah, um, awesome. It's been great. So thanks everyone for watching tonight. We really appreciate you joining us on the live stream. Just a reminder that this has been recorded. So if you want to go jump back to it later on, um, feel free to. We will upload it in the next couple of days on our Facebook page. Um, but we will be back again next Sunday at 7pm. Thanks all for joining us. Thanks everyone.